Hello everybody, this is Gregory with 5-Minute Catholic Apologetics, where 5 minutes of your time may get you to the divine. Today we're going to help Protestant converts come to the beauty of the communion of saints. Now before we begin, let's start with a prayer. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritu Sancti. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritu Sancto. Sucuturam principio et nucet semper. Et a secula seculorum. Amen. All right, so I'll put in the banner notes some of the episodes that we have addressing the communion of saints, praying to the dead, and we'll, talk, we'll touch upon these tangentially, but this is more of just helping converts out. And I think, in general, the saints are an underutilized tool for Catholics in general. I don't think we, we read enough about them or, or think about them enough, and so there's there's two ways we can look at the saints, and I think one is kind of the foundational view of the saints, and then number two would be maybe a higher level way that maybe once incrementally uh, you can get to this higher level. So the saints, why do we love the saints? Well, on a most superficial level, they are role models. These are historical figures from our heritage that serve as role models and a variety of role models. I mean, we have saints that, of course, were martyred. You think of Felicity and Perpetua, you know, they roll off the, a lot of the, of the martyr saints, Saint Cecilia, Saint Agnes, during the Eucharistic prayers. All of the apostles were martyrs, aside from Saint John the Evangelist. We have an episode here on how each of the apostles were martyred. And I think it was Tertullian, who we have an episode here on too, who said that the blood of the martyrs was, was what made the church grow. That's a really bad quote <laughs> of, of what he said. But we have the martyrs, but we also have like the exemplary women. We have like Little Flower, for example, or St. Bernadette of Sobero, who saw the Virgin Mary. Uh, you have the, those women that took up a lot of uh, suffering, like St. Rita of Cassia. And, you know, we're not going to go through every saint and, and what they did. But there is a saint for everybody in your life. And so on one level, reading the lives of the saints, and there's various compendiums that you can read, helps us because it helps us learn about what other great people in time did at different situations. I mean, you have saints that, like St. Louis was one of the, the, the paradigmatic monarchs of Western civilization, a saintly man. So, I mean, there's, there's a saint for everybody. So reading about the saints or going to a YouTube channel that has a lot of saints would behoove you. Now, I have an episode maybe a week ago, a week and a half ago, where I say 80% of Catholic YouTube content you should avoid because most of it is kind of like the harbinger of doom kind of content. But those websites that do saints of the day, like Sense of Census Fidelium, for example, those are good because you get to learn about the saints. Also, the Magnificat, the, 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 the reading, uh, the, the kind of the daily reading thing, has a saint of the day between each of the days. And I think the Benedictus, the more traditional Latin Mass one, also has some stuff on saints too. So I would exhort all Catholics, but certainly Protestant converts, to approach the saints because like you would approach some of the progenitors of your denomination, whatever your denomination is, you read about them, you learned about them, things that they did that were great and so forth. So really it's no different here. You're reading about various saints of the Catholic past and believe me, there's a saint for everybody. So that's one level. Now the higher level is understanding that the saints and we have an episode, Who is in Heaven, right? So only those who have been cleaned of sin are in heaven. Those who have been designated, uh, well, let's, let's strip it. So we're just talking about the saints, okay? We're just talking about saints. So the church designates who, who are saints, and all saints are in heaven. If the church is designated, like St. Sebastian is a saint, he's in heaven. Padre Pio, he's a saint, he's in heaven. So if these people are in heaven, which we know there are, and we know that... St. Paul says that we should pray for one another. Death does not separate this kind of intercessory interaction that we have 
um, with those who have died. And we know St. James says at the end of the epistles of James, the prayers of a righteous man avails much. So we know the prayers of those who are not stained by sin are more efficacious. This is one of the reasons we, we, we ask for the intercession of the Virgin Mary, because she is without sin. And was always without sin. Go to the episodes we have on the four Marian dogmas. So praying to the saints, we're not worshiping the saints. It's no different than if I ask my mom to pray for me. But my mom has the stain of sin, even though she's 82. She's, <laughs> she's, she's got like sin of detraction, if you know what kind of sin that is. But praying to those who have been cleaned and have no sin at all, those are in heaven, their sins, are, or I'm sorry, their, their prayers, their intercessions are more efficacious. Now we have an episode on the first Timothy, how Jesus Christ is our only mediator, how that is commonly misunderstood by Protestants. So we won't spend too much time on that, but understand there is nothing wrong. The church has always taught the intercessory power of praying for the dead, but also praying to the saints for asking them for their intercession. And so that would be a higher level. So everyone, Catholic, recent converts, Orthodox, Anglicans, I would even say, dare say Protestants, should be reading on the lives of great saints because it edifies us. It increases our interior life. It increases our spiritual life. It, it makes our life better. And, and, and if we tell our children, and we think that it's important for children to read about Thomas Jefferson or to read about I don't know, George III or what, whatever it is, why would we not apply that to important people from our religious heritage? So on the, on that, on the bottom of we should do that. But once you do that, try to have a good understanding. And by all means, these episodes are not meant to be exhaustible. So go to other outlets and understand if you have problems praying to the saints for their intercession, then read up on it. You know, don't have the sin of pridefulness and just be like, no, I, I, I can't do this. And look, to be fair, you don't have to pray to saints. You can pray straight to any of the, the persons of the Trinity. You don't have to pray to the saints uh, to ask for the intercession. But it's just one of those many tools that we have at our disposal that Catholics and Orthodox have. Uh, that Protestants don't have. And so I would exhort you, encourage you to use these tools that we have as Catholics and the saints are an indispensable tool, not only to learn about what they were like on earth, but also their ability to improve or, or affect your life right now as they are in heaven embraced in the beatific vision. With, with God. So I would encourage you to do that as well. Guys, post in the comments. Let me know if there's a particular patron saint that you have or a particular saint that you you love their life story. If you go to any of the live streams that I've done, that's one of the questions I ask my guests at the end is like, who's your favorite? Who's your favorite saint? I would like to hear from you. Please hit the notification button so these episodes come fresh to you. Share with others. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray.